Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, caught on video, a black teenager punches a bus driver in the face because apparently demanding a bus fare is now racist. Then, Pope Francis arrives in the U.S. for a publicly charged historic visit. The Pope is doubling down. He wants to have someone who portrays this whole Aslan narrative of the fact that the uh, southwest of America really belongs to Mexico. And check out the reaction of this crowd when Joe Biggs reveals his Hillary for Prison t-shirt. <laughs> Plus, what they are not telling you about the clock kid and this. Get right and, and change your part. And it's nothing wrong with coming off the Democratic plantation. Yes. <laughs> All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We've reached a critical juncture in the globalist program. That's why we're launching Operation Money Bomb 2015. And with the money we raise from this, we will be able to stay on the satellites and get on cable stations across North America, reaching tens of millions of more people right at the time they're receptive and looking for answers. So join us this September 16th and 17th. We're charging up, getting ready, and going in. Well, with today's arrival of Pope Francis to the United States, there's a lot of controversy over who the Obama administration has added to the guest list of who's going to be at the White House during his visit. A lot of uh, conservative commentators are actually saying the president shouldn't have invited people who are at odds uh, with the Vatican's positions on gay clergy, some same-sex marriage, and abortion. Now, Republican presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee uh, tweeted out, Classless decision by the president to transform the Pope's visit into a politicized cattle call. It's an insult to millions of Catholics. Now, the Vatican and the White House have now played down these reports over the differences of the guest list, but they include the first openly gay Episcopal bishop, a leader for transgender rights, a gay Catholic blogger, and a prominent nun lobbyist who bucked the bishops on the Affordable Care Act. And now, of course, they're saying, you know, they probably wouldn't want to put the Pope in an embarrassing position to where he's going to be photographed with some people. And then that might be taken as uh, the Pope accepting the lifestyle they live or whatever message it is that they're trying to push. But, you know, let's face it, the president is really hoping that the Pope's moral authority is going to help him push his agenda, which is, of course, just the U.N.'s globalist agenda and uh, coming up later in the show, we're going to have a clip from David Knight. He is there with Jakari Jackson covering the Pope's visit, talking a lot about how he is uh, basically using religion to push this globalist agenda. We're going to be exposing this all throughout the week. So that's coming up later in the show. But first, here's a win for liberty. American University is going to choose freedom of expression over trigger warnings. Now, they put out this uh, faculty resolution on freedom of expression, and they said the pursuit of knowledge, uh, unfettered discourse, no matter how controversial, inconvenient, or uncomfortable, is a condition necessary to the pursuit of knowledge. And freedom of speech undergirds the cherished principle of academic freedom. So American University is going to be committed to protecting that First Amendment right, and they say that regardless if this is going to offend any student. They're going to publish this and champion uh, free, freely communicating these ideas, as well as the way the study material is written, produced, or stated, even if some members of the community might find it disturbing. Now, they do go on to say that faculty can put some warnings to students to say, hey, you're about to be exposed to some controversial material, but they 
do not agree with actually offering trigger warnings to students. <sighs> That's right, they actually wanna put trigger warnings on the book. So oh, something you read in here might offend you because a lot of times students are using these trigger warnings to opt out of the lessons altogether. And they, this university says that they don't want uh, the students to do this. Obviously, the fact shielding students from controversial material will deter them from becoming critical thinkers and responsible citizens. I mean, my goodness, that's one of the big, th the reasons why you go to the university is that you can challenge your ideas and your way of thinking, but we're basically seeing uh, the way this country is headed. And so kudos to American University for putting this out there. Hopefully this will you know, start to transfer through the rest of the university system. But now speaking of sensitivities at school, everyone recalls Monday we had the uh, clock kid who was booted out of school, uh, momentarily arrested for bringing in a clock that looked just like a suitcase bomb. I'm sorry if you look at it, it, lo it looks like any bomb you would see in a movie. He might as well have packaged it inside of a uh, grocery bag and tied a string around it. You know, it looked just like something you would see uh, in the movies. Well, now Judge Andrew Napolitano is coming out to say the clock kid and his family could be charged with fraud if the incident is proved to be a purposeful hoax. So, you know, this is if it's if it is an elaborate hoax, this would mean the president and Mark Zuckerberg and all sorts of people fell for this. Now, uh, he goes on to issue this warning because thousands of dollars have been donated to Muhammad uh, following this incident. And he says, if the parents were involved in the hoax, now you have a fraud going on because money has been collected on false pretenses. Uh, these donations were received via legal and scholarship funds. Now, it's been noted that Muhammad's father is a known activist who has engaged in several stunts to call out what he has perceived to be anti-Islamic activity. And Muhammad himself has even implied in a YouTube video that he knew that the clock he had built looked suspicious and threatening. He said, I closed the clock with a cable. I didn't want it to look, I didn't want to lock it to make it seem like a threat. So I just use a simple cable so it won't look that much suspicious. So now that is uh, kind of opposite of what we were hearing earlier in the week where he stated that it's just a clock, it's just a clock. You know, he didn't think it was suspicious or threatening at all. So here, I mean, was this an elaborate orchestrated hoax? Who knows, that's probably racist of me to even pose that question. And here's another thing that is racist. You're not even allowed to ask people for their bus fare. Now, this is surveillance footage captured on September 15th. It shows a boy following a group of other teens onto a bus, but unlike the others, he was unable to produce a student ID, so the driver requires him to pay the fare. Watch what happens. He has an ID. What's your student name today? Yeah, because you have nothing. What do you have? What did you just say? If you want to get, get, get Libby, you can get off the bus. No, I'm all the way off. Really? Fine. Get off my bus. Now. Put your hand on me. See what happens. Oh, jeez. So unfortunately, these are the kind of incidents that we're going to see more and more of as we're creating this society of victims, people who are seeing everything as racist or offensive, and I need a trigger warning for everything. Now we have these people who aren't critical thinkers who are just saying that's racist that you would demand a fare since I don't have a student ID and I just tried to walk on the bus. You know, that's what's going to be happening in the society. How dare you? But here is a whole another group <laughs> that you might not have even thought about this oppressed class gingers how often have you made fun of a redhead i know i do it on the daily here when i'm at work with travis knight our resident ginger now we've got a ginger extremist who's found guilty of a plot to shoot prince charles and william so that harry could be the king for the aryan people now, I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but I, it just makes me kind of laugh. So this is a right-wing extremist. He felt marginalized by society due to his ginger hair, and he also plotted a cyanide attack and compared himself to Anders Breivik. So they found him guilty of preparing this terror attack after 14 hours of deliberations. So there you go. This guy really wanted Harry to be the king since he also is a ginger 
But there again, so there's just this whole class of people who are now offended. They're perpetually offended. And, you know, we got to worry about all of these people, including, including now the, the new oppressed class, pedophiles. Now, we've been talking about this a lot this week because it was just so shocking that this is what we have now, the media promoting pedophile rights. And we've kind of talked for years about something like this happening when the moral depravity of the, the, the United States as it just you know continues its rapid decline. But now here it is. So this was Salon.com. They posted this yesterday. Uh, basically, it was an op-ed by a self-described pedophile asking Americans to learn to accept pedophiles and be understanding and supportive of their sexual orientation. It actually, you know, they actually say that this is a new sexual orientation that has been discovered, um, saying that we need to now advocate for redefining pedophilia um, and the negative potential that this could have. You know, it's not so negative for the children who are gonna be victims of these people. We need to be understanding and sensitive of these pedophiles. So this is what's now being pushed of course, they didn't include a trigger warning for that because I was highly offended by this article. Now we've got a louder with Crowder has responded. This is up on Infowars and he says, no salon.com. I don't need to understand the plight of pedophiles. And uh, basically he calls Salon out and he's saying, let's remove the pedophilia aspect from this for a second and replace it with say racism. Would Salon.com run an article titled, I'm a racist, but I'm not a monster. I've never discriminated against a black man, and I never would. But before judging me, won't you listen? Or <laughs> would they run an article that said, I'm a college fraternity brother, and I have rape fantasies, but I'm not a monster. I've never drugged or bound a girl, and I never would. But before judging me harshly, would you be willing to listen? And I guarantee you the answer is no. We're not seeing any of these op-ed pieces by self-described, you know, I'm a, I'm a racist, but I'm not a monster, or I, I would be a rapist, but I promise I'm not gonna do it. Please understand me, please have sympathy for me. This isn't the kind of message that they're pushing. However, pedophilia? I mean, what is going on here? When does, I mean, what does that say about the country when child rape is not an issue when they're trying to say, you know what, let's just, let's have a little bit of a sensitivity for these guys. But let me tell you, if I ever have kids and somebody touches them, I got a trigger warning for them as well. Now, this is kind of tying into this whole agenda here of, of easing up on sex with children, young people, because they're even covering it up now over in Europe. Now, this is a, the German media. We're having reports of them covering up rapes of children that are being committed by Muslim migrants. Now, we've talked about this before. A lot of these are young people and women being forced into prostitution, um, and they're covering it up. They will not report on it. German media outlets are refusing to broadcast this information because they don't want to offend the hundreds of thousands of migrants that are now flooding their country. And uh, th they say such content could inflame tensions. Now, Germany's top public broadcaster, ZDF, they decided to censor a primetime crime show um, that seeks public help in catching criminals. They refused to run a segment about a, quote, darker skinned rape suspect. And the editor in chief there said, we don't wanna inflame the situation and spread the bad mood. The migrants don't deserve it. So. You know, they want to talk all about the alleged rape crisis on college campuses, but they will not talk about the rape crisis going on now with a flood of illegal immigrants in Europe and elsewhere. We've seen the same sort of silencing here at our own southern border with the illegal immigrants coming in here. Total cover up of that. I know John Bound did a report on that, just saying they're basically raping their way through our country. But again, those are not the things that you're going to hear on the news.